Over the past year, we have been inundated with information on how many students underperformed their grade level coming out of the pandemic. In fact, we know that education at all levels has been adapting to students who are underprepared for their coursework they should be studying. We know that there will always be students who succeed. They are in schools or systems that provide support and challenge. They have families who prioritize education. They have funding sources that make finding resources to support education available. They speak English as their first language and for many, many more environmental reasons. But having those advantages does not always equate with academic success. We also know that there are groups of students who are more challenged in gaining their education. We know that male students, those in inner city districts, those who do not speak English as a first language, and those whose families do not understand or do not prioritize strong educational outcomes are being left behind. Finally, we know that some students who are not adequately prepared to succeed are being pushed through educational systems to the level of college study. These students are expected to perform without the skills or the knowledge to be successful. While this is happening, none of this is a death knell for the student's future. It does not need to be the end of any student's education, period. We don't want you to be that student. We don't want you to be lost in the numbers, be they fiscal or student population. We don't want you to be forgotten by teachers or family members who don't understand the power of education. We don't want you to spend your lives blaming instructors, schools, family members, the world, or most destructively, blaming yourself. We want you to grow, to be challenged intellectually, to know the joy of contributing at work, in your family community, and at your school because you have the information available in your big, beautiful brain. Now I know you are looking at me wondering what a middle-aged white woman knows about advocating for yourself when it comes to education. Well, not everything, by far. But I have gained experience with my education, my time as a college instructor and advisor, as a parent, and as the daughter of a mother who raised six kids by herself for several years after my father died. Again, not an expert, just a person who cares. Hi, I'm Margaret Meek, and this is How to Avoid Being the Student Left Behind. Our first and most crucial point is that you must be willing to fight for yourself. Fight for your right to learn. It will not always be a straightforward path. It will not always be easy. It will not always be flowers and light, but it will always be worthwhile. Now, it is essential to note that the need to fight for your education is not only a message for those facing significant challenges to their future. This lesson is vital for those fighting whatever your battle is today. So stay with us and learn some techniques to help you reach success, whatever that means to you. Perhaps the largest hurdle to learning is your self-perception. If you have been told you aren't smart enough, if you believe you can't learn, if you believe you are in everything by yourself, if you think the odds are stacked against you, you won't succeed. How do you change your self-concept? How do you believe that you have the right to learn? How do you push yourself to gain knowledge even when the concepts are complex? There are steps you can take. You need to determine which steps apply to your situation, and if you can't decide what the next step is, you need to ask for help. Every student at every level must become very comfortable asking for help. Please speak with your family and ask for their support. Please speak with your counselor at your school, be it in middle or high school or college. Ask a favorite teacher if they can help you think through your options and strengths. Work to find an organization advisor who can hear your concerns and help you turn your actions into a plan to move ahead. Work with friends, coaches, employers, religious leaders, classmates, whomever you can to find encouragement. You may not find the one person who serves as your solo support. You may be well served by a patchwork of individuals who care and are willing to spend time with you. You need to spend time with yourself. Yep, you heard that right. You need to allow yourself to write up a list of what you do well and the skills, ability, and knowledge you possess. Be honest with yourself. No person in this world is without good. What do you have to offer? 
Do you make friends easily? Are you athletically talented? Do you have a way of looking at items and finding common points? Are you artistic? Do you have a great memory? Can you entertain yourself without electronics for a long while? Are you curious? Do you read a lot? Does math come easily to you? If you can't think of anything about yourself, ask those around you what they think you do well. Then return the favor. We all like to hear good things about ourselves. Do not take the bias of others who put you down to feel good about themselves. Consider what people say about you and decide if they are true or valuable to you. Even if they are right about your past, you are the only one who can direct your future. Do the right things to ensure you have a better path. There are other steps you can take to ensure you are the student willing to learn instead of blaming the instructor or any other forces in the world. For example, study how to study. Take a class if offered in your school or online, or piece together information on how best to organize, break down concepts, take notes, ingest, and not just regurgitate information, or how to adjust to or overcome any learning disabilities you may have. Engage. Actually go to class. Approach any lessons ready to learn. Turn off distractions, focus, and make sure you are prepared to dissect why you are or are not understanding a concept. And avoid procrastination at all costs. Don't wait till the last minute to study. Review the readings before you walk into class. Review what is presented in class once, twice, or ten times before the next class session. Give yourself time to identify the questions you have on any topic and to gain confidence in the topics you have mastered. Carve out time to learn. Balancing family commitments, work, activities, relationships, and classes can be difficult. Find a way. If you commute to school, listen to replays of online lectures during your drive. Look for ways to incorporate your skills and knowledge into your activities. For example, if you are a baseball player, use your understanding of physics to help you improve your approach to the game. Then set aside time to read, repeat, Practice implementing what you are learning and complete your assignments. Leave yourself time to review every project you finish to ensure you are comfortable with your answers before submitting the work. Here's a big one. If you don't understand what is being taught in a class, ask for help or find a resource that makes the concept clear to you. That can mean asking the instructor for help or another teacher in that same academic department. Find a tutor. Many such resources are offered at no cost. Find a video or explanation online that you can follow. Ask another person in your class for assistance if they understand that concept, or find a study group or study buddy if others are working as hard as you to learn. Ask your counselor or academic advisor to help you locate resources. Sometimes the concepts will be challenging to understand because you are expanding your brain's capacity to make connections you are learning more complex concepts. It isn't that the topic is difficult for you and only you. It is about the concept being difficult for everyone in the class. Try approaching the topic forwards, backwards, or sideways. Make new connections in your brain to see if that helps dislodge the barrier you are currently facing. Be positive. Go into each of these issues knowing you can learn the concept, not thinking you aren't good enough. Your whole life will consist of issues you don't understand. So develop tenacity early to help you find the answers you need. Allow yourself to succeed. If you are always figuring out ways you might fail or how the other person is to blame for your lack of education, you are wasting time and undermining all the progress you make. There will be times when something outside your control happens that you just can't solve. Accept that. Recognize that it happens to all of us and then drive on. As Ted Lasso would say, be a goldfish. Or in other words, have a short memory for the bad that happens in your life. Review it, learn from it, and then move on. Don't expect to be perfect or have an ideal academic record. Perfection is entirely overrated. The times we learn the most come when we have to work for it, adjust to our situation, and learn from others. Aiming for perfection also takes up a lot of energy and a good deal of time. Use those resources to regroup after mistakes or problems and start again. Don't let others do for you what you can do for yourself. 
Learned helplessness is dangerous. Don't give in, even if that means you need to have a discussion with your parents about giving you space. Your education and your life are not races with others. You're only in a race with who you were yesterday. Celebrate growth. Build in rewards for hard work. Push back the barriers you put on yourself or that you accept being built around you by others. You need to bet on yourself. Believe in yourself. Fight for your right to be educated. Demonstrate commitment. Ask for help, work hard, and exhibit discipline, and no one will be able to leave you behind. If you found any of this information useful, hit the like button or perhaps consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.